Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode. My name is Jordan. I'm a millennial investor. If you've not seen me before, my goal is to get to $1 million by the age of 40, and I plan on doing that by investing in fantastic growth companies such as the one that we're talking about in today's video, which is Chewy Stock, ticker symbol CHWY. Now, I have invested heavily into this company relative to my portfolio size, and as of the last reporting, as of today, my portfolio has 54.49% of it right here is all in Chewy stock. I am very bullish on the company. It's not one that I plan on selling anytime soon. And I want to give an update on this company and why I think it's a fantastic growth story, why I think there's lots of room for opportunity ahead. And we'll also take a look at both the revenue, the gross margins, the profit margins, some earnings call transcript that I wanted to highlight, and just overall why I think I'm really bullish on this company and why I think it will be a great investment right now at $50 and under. If you haven't got signed up below, get up to $50 for getting signed up with M1 Finance. 124 people have signed up so far. So go ahead and go down below, check out that link. It's absolutely free to use. Everybody that has signed up, all 124 of them have loved it. It's free, no fees whatsoever. And I think it's just a fantastic platform, especially for someone that's a beginner and want to get started and wants to build that nest egg and it gives you $50 for you to do so. So go ahead and sign up there and let's jump straight into Chewy Stock. Now, first off, like I said, it's over half of my portfolio as of the time that I'm filming this on January 10th, 54.49% to be exact. And I am down big on my investment. It has dropped some substantially from where I originally invested in the company. Now, it did have a small green day today, but overall the losses are quite substantial at negative 26.45% or $5,384. But that doesn't worry me at all because when I look at the fundamental business and the fact that I invested at $67.86 a share and today it trades at $49.91, I don't worry because I look at things such as this. I want to start with the most recent earnings call transcript and I want to highlight a couple paragraphs here and then we'll move back to this and we'll go back and forth and look at some different metrics. First off, it says, our metrics measuring demand and customer engagement, such as site traffic, new customer acquisition, order volume, order size, purchase frequency, and net sales per active customers, or NSPAC, were strong throughout the quarter. We ended quarter three with 20.4 million customers, a year-over-year -year increase of 15%. Consistent with the trends that we have seen throughout 2021, Gross customer ads continue to exceed pre-pandemic levels and retention rates continue to track in line with historical levels. More importantly, the strength and quality of our new and active customers continues to improve. For example, we estimate that the expected lifetime values of quarter three 2021 customer cohort is 12% higher than the pre-pandemic counterpart. Additionally, third quarter auto ship customer sales as a percent of net sales increased 140 basis points to 70.6%. Now let's go ahead and stop right there real quick. Okay, you see this revenue and this is what causes this company to have consistent record revenue quarter after quarter after quarter. When a customer joins Chewy, they're not just providing Chewy, it's a revenue. They're providing them further future revenue out into the future. So for example, let's say that if a customer spends $100 a year based on, on Chewy products that they sell and they have on auto ship every single month, then it is more likely that next year that $100 is going to increase to a larger number, say 110, 120, 130. And that is what causes this net revenue to increase over time. They're adding customers, but more importantly, they're customers that join in 2020 and 2019 and 2018, 2017 are spending more and more and more each and every month, each and every year. This is a new high for the company. Last but not least, the average order value for Chewy was up 6% and 13% higher than the quarter three 2020 and quarter three 2019 cohorts. So in this example, where I said someone would spend $100, so okay, in this example, we'll give the exact numbers, okay? If someone spent $100 in 2019, okay? If someone spent $100 in 2020, then that means their average order was 6% higher they would spend $106 this year on their orders. Now, the same thing goes for 2019. Two years ago, you can see how this is over double. So if someone was spending, say, $100 in their order in 2019, now they're spending $113, okay? And so this is really big, especially for those that have lots of pets and continue to order more and more over time. These positive new customer behaviors flow through this NSPAC, which is an important gauge of overall customer engagement and lifetime customer contribution. Here we are pleased to share that the third quarter in SPAC, which is most important for a company like this, increased 15% to $419, okay? That means that the average amount that customers are spending is $419. You can see that that is very, 
very high. That is, that is what is that? Rough math. I'm ahead. I believe that's is that thirty five dollars a month. Let's go ahead and pull up our calculator here. If we take four hundred and nineteen dollars and divide that by twelve, that means that right now, yeah, thirty four dollars and ninety one cents every single month that customers are spending every month. That is much higher than say something like an average Netflix subscription. Let's just put Netflix monthly cost if i can type into I, I can't type well how do i even know how to type so monthly cost for a netflix subscription is say so monthly cost for a netflix subscription is say anywhere from nine dollars to eighteen dollars so that means the average is about 14. so that means on chewy the average customer is spending a little over double than what they are in that of the traditional products say just something like a netflix obviously those are two vastly different companies but i'm just using as an example that people are willing to consistently spend a pretty fair amount of money for, for a company such as this. Now it says this is a record increase for them and is excited to see NSPAC growth accelerate in a large 2020 cohort, matures in our expanded customer choices and increased discoverability, expedite share of wallet gains, even with these gains, uh, pay attention to this sentence right here. Even with these gains, we are still only capturing a fraction of the average U.S. And so this leads me to the hyper charts here. Now, like I said with revenue, it continues to grow quarter after quarter after quarter. And what this reminds me of is a lot like what we saw with Amazon. Amazon is obviously a different business, but they are an e-commerce company nonetheless, just like they are with Chewy. Now, if we go ahead and look at the quarter over quarter revenue, it's pretty consistent year over year, right? But if we look at the profitability, it doesn't start to really come in until about honestly the last couple of years. If we look at this on an annual chart, you can see this more clearly. If you look at the annual revenue and you look at the annual profit versus uh, Amazon and Chewy, you can see where the stage at Chewy is at right now. It's about where Amazon was in 2013, 2014, 2015. They're right about this level, right? That's where Chewy is at. But look at the amount that net income begins to grow for Amazon due to pure scalability. It goes from 596 million and it like, what is that? That's about a 4X to 2.3 billion. It increases, what is that? About 30, 40% to 3 billion. It three X's, it over three X's in the next year to 10 billion. It goes up another 15% or so in 2019. And then it about doubles again in 2020. You can see the massive increase in profitability for Amazon. Now, obviously, Amazon is a far different company than Chewy, but I see a similar story here. While the revenue growth is consistent, the margins have slowly increased over time. Now, first off, let's look at gross profit. This is just the revenue that they take in minus the cost of goods sold. So, for example, if it takes them $20 for them to uh, make a bag of dog food, for example, and then they sell that for $22, then that means they're at a 10% gross margin. That doesn't factor in other things like debt repayments or any interest and taxes, uh, amortization, depreciation, all that good stuff, right? But you can see this gross margin year over year is improving. And this is the one thing that the last couple quarters have lagged due to supply chain issues and labor shortages. But even then, it's still an improvement year over year. People are not paying attention to that. Uh, the gross margin in quarter three, 2021 was 26.3%, but it was lower one year ago at 25.5. So 25.5 over 26.4, that's about a 0.9% increase, which is really important as this company continually scales its, uh, its revenue, right? And if we look at the profit margins, this is something that once again has improved year over year. The last quarter or two have really lagged, and as they were finally starting to hit a positive number, they've trended back into the negative, and I expect this to come back big in 2022. I expect positive positive numbers by the end of this year, uh, quite nicely, to be honest. Now, if we look at quarter three, 2020, it was negative 1.85 but it increased a positive number to 1.46. So you can you can see that it increased 0.39% into the positive, and that's the actual important number, the positive net income, right? That's where the bottom line earnings is gonna come in, improving this metric over time. And that's what caused these two positive numbers right here to put up a positive net income number. Now, right now, the last two quarters have been negative, but what happens when this company finally turns positive, right? And that leads me to the next part I wanted to highlight, okay? It says, overall, when evaluating Chewy's progress from a customer lens, we now offer rapidly growing multi-dimensional customer experience that spans consumables, hard goods, private label brands, and an emerging full ecosystem of health offerings. This makes our customers stickier and gives them an opportunity to strengthen their engagement and spend with us. And finally, while we have not made any announcements yet on our last two roadmap components, non-vet services and an international expansion, both remain questions of when and not if. So looking back, we have accomplished a lot in 
and have much to be proud of. But looking forward, tremendous opportunity still lies ahead. Tremendous opportunity still lies ahead is what the management team says. And in so many ways, we are just getting started. With that, I'll wrap up by reiterating that we are pleased with our quarter three performance and our ability to deliver strong results in the face of disruptions and challenging macro conditions. Looking beyond these near-term challenges, there's plenty of reason for optimism. Once again, the long-term story stays intact. And if you can think that the NSPAC, the net spend per active customer is increasing 15%, for quite frankly, uh, just a, a reasonable amount of expansion and services and products, the fact that they're still just tapping into this market, while they've been around for about a decade or two, they're just starting to get into this market, especially into the international expansion that hadn't even begun yet. So right now we see that the beginning of 2021 and the early and late 2024, you can see that they produced 21 million and 38 million was the positive net income. Now what happens when these numbers become consistent and even begin to grow? What happens when this company consistently does 50 million, 100 million, 200 million in quarter after quarter net income? The profitability is going to come back in a major way, and this is going to give this company a massive advantage for growing as they can do share buybacks, they can buy back other businesses, and that is fantastic looking at a company that has absolutely zero debt and billions of dollars in cash on the balance sheet. So lots of room for margin, lots of room for expansion. And the thing is, with interest rates going up, when you have no debt and a company that is growing like crazy, I don't care if interest rates go up all the way to 10%, this company's going to continue to grow pretty much no matter what as long as we don't go into a great depression or something but other than that that's all the reasons why i'm bullish on chewy that's why i own 300 shares and it's my largest position in the stock market but other than that if you didn't get signed up down below 124 people have signed up so far and got a free 50 dollars. so why would you not like to do the same it's 50 bucks guys for real just scroll down click the link you can be one number 125 to do so and it's a full-fledged brokerage that is free to use and i fully stand by them 100 percent but other than that guys thank you so much for watching i appreciate for watching all the way to the end subscribe if you wouldn't down below and i'll catch you guys next time